It's that time of the year now when Samsung's come out with a new Note, a successor to the critically acclaimed Galaxy Note 4. So what's changed? Well, let's take a closer look. Hey guys, this is Ash here from C4E Tech and you're watching my comparison of the Galaxy Note 4 with the new Samsung Galaxy Note 5. Let's get started. With the Note 5, Samsung's continued the move to premium materials. The design is closer to the S6 than the Note 4. Just like with the Note 4, we still have 2.5D Gorilla Glass to the front, but the back's not removable anymore. We now have 3D Gorilla Glass to the back, kind of similar to what we've seen from Xiaomi with the Mi Note and the Mi Note Pro. This means the Note 5 lacks both the replaceable battery and the microSD card slot from the Note 4. Moreover, the battery capacity is smaller at 3000mAh, down from 3220mAh on the Note 4. Additionally, the Note 5 also loses the IR blaster from the Note 4. Now, all's not bad, the Note 5 does look and feel premium. And despite retaining the 5.7 inch display from the Note 4, the Note 5 is shorter, narrower and slimmer than its predecessor. It's even a tad lighter. The Note 5 also charges faster and has built-in support for wireless charging. The S Pen on the Note 5 has a small clicker to the back. This means you just need to push to access the S Pen instead of having to pull it out using the indent like with the S Pen on the Note 4. While I really like the clicker to the back, I kind of feel it makes what used to be one smooth action on the Note 4 into a two-stage process on the Note 5. Anyway, it's also worth noting that you can pop the S Pen in the wrong way now and if you end up doing so, you'd break the mechanism inside. Moving on, the fingerprint sensor on the Note 5 has been upgraded as well. Like with the S6, you just need to place your finger on it, unlike with the Note 4 that required a swipe. The internals have also received the mandatory annual upgrade. While the Note 4 was predominantly powered by the Snapdragon 805 chip, that's 4 Crate 50 cores clocked at 2.7 GHz each, coupled with an Adreno 420 GPU and 3 GB of RAM, the Note 5 is now powered by the 64 bit Exynos 7420 chip. That's 4 Cortex A53 cores clocked at 1.5 GHz each, 4 Cortex A57 cores clocked at 2.1 GHz each, coupled with a Mali T760 MP8 GPU and 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Benchmarks indicate the Note 5's internals to be a significant upgrade, though with regular intensive usage scenarios like gaming, the Note 4 can still hold its own. It's also worth noting that the Exynos 7420 on the Note 5 is built on the 14 nanometer manufacturing process and Samsung claims that this reduces the power consumption and hence the decision to go with a smaller capacity battery. While I was initially skeptical, our testing so far seems to indicate that Samsung's claims are indeed true. Anyway, that being said, let's now talk about the display. Both phones sport Quad HD displays spread over 5.7 inches resulting in pixel densities of 518 pixels per inch. Sporting AMOLED tech, images on both displays are vivid with inky blacks and excellent viewing angles. That being said, the whites on the Note 5 are noticeably whiter and the display is also a tad brighter. When it comes to the cameras, both phones sport 16 megapixel rear cameras with optical image stabilization and can both shoot 4K video. The Note 5 though has a bumped up 5 megapixel front shooter compared to the 3.7 megapixel front camera on the Note 4. The Note 4 did provide one of the best camera experiences on a smartphone last year, and the S6 managed to improve upon that. The Note 5 uses the same sensor from the S6, so we expect it to perform as well as the S6 if not better. With regards to the camera software, the Note 5 has a few tricks up its sleeve. The Pro Mode now has an option to control shutter speed, you also have an option to shoot raw images and you can broadcast live to YouTube from the camera app itself. Most importantly, the annoying lag on the Note 4 when jumping to the gallery from the camera isn't present anymore. We'll have more for you on the camera front in a full review of the Note 5 that's due pretty soon. Anyway, talking about software, the Note 4 runs on Android 5.0.1 Lollipop with Samsung's pre S6 TouchWiz on top. TouchWiz on the S6. That was a turning point for Samsung. Cause honestly, TouchWiz before the Galaxy S6 was nothing but a bloated and laggy piece of UI. But since the S6, it's become one of my favorite manufacturer skins, a sentence I never thought I'd say. Anyway, this means Android 5.1 Lollipop with the new and improved TouchWiz on the Note 5 feels much cleaner and smoother. The Note 4 has some great features like multi-window to run two apps side by side, the option to resize the window, have an app float on screen, to minimize an app and have little icons float on screen, the ultra power saving mode, the private mode and so on. All those are present on the Note 5 as well. 
Additionally, we get a theme store to download themes to let, let you customize the look and feel of the UI. There's an option to double press the home key to quickly launch the camera. There's even a new option to triple press the home key to shrink the display to ease single-handed usage. Note that this is also available on the Note 4 but requires a swipe back and forth from the sides. Similarly, the S Pen functionalities evolved as well. Pull it out and the air commands now show up from the side. Not only do things look different, but you can now add a few app shortcuts here as well. You can also take notes with the screen off. Just pull the S Pen out and take notes. Hit the power key and it gets saved. You can access it from S Memo whenever you want. Overall, the UI on the Note 5 feels a lot more fluid and minor annoyances like the recent app slag aren't present anymore. Unlike with the fingerprint sensor, these aren't hardware issues. If Samsung were to upgrade the Note 4 to the new TouchWiz, the Note 4 does pack enough power underneath to provide a similar user experience. But will Samsung upgrade the Note 4 to the newer TouchWiz? Well, I guess only time will tell, but based on Samsung's track record, I'd ask you guys not to hold your breath. Anyway, with that we get to the price and while the Note 4 is currently available for about 550 US dollars or 40,000 rupees here in India, the 32 gig variant of the Note 5 is being sold for about 720 US dollars and hasn't been launched in India yet. But it is expected to arrive in the next few weeks and I'd expect it to be priced at around 50,000 rupees. Both phones aren't cheap by any means. So if you are looking to choose between both, from purely a looks and performance perspective, I'd say go with the Note 5. But if microSD and a user replaceable battery are really important, then you could save yourself a bit of cash and go with the Note 4 because even today, the Galaxy Note 4 is still a pretty awesome phone. Anyway, these are just my two cents. Do you agree? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So with that, we get to the end of this video. Hope you liked it, hope you found it useful. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up and for more videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below. If you do want to pick up either of these phones, I leave direct links in the description. Do use them if you want to help the channel out. And I guess that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye bye now.